Welcome back to the channel guys. Finally, our full review of the 2021 Asus Rogue Zephyrus G15. Is it really all that great? We've already taken you through a fun unboxing with this beast, but this review takes you through the most important details that may sway your decision to pick this one up. Now, we got the most powerful configuration available, but after running a ridiculous amount of tests and benchmarks, we've got some great news for those of you who are really trying to save some money. We're gonna share with you a much more budget-friendly configuration that's a lot cheaper and almost as fast as our $2,400 configuration. The model we got is the Moonlight White version with a 15.6 inch QHD 1440p screen with 165 hertz refresh rate. It's got an 8 core AMD Ryzen 9 5900 HS processor with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM with support up to 48 and the super powerful Nvidia GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 dedicated video RAM, a 1 terabyte SSD drive with the max possible being 2 terabytes, and 6 speakers powered by Dolby Atmos. Keep it locked here as we dive into the design and build quality, review of the internals, performance and gaming benchmarks marks, heat tests, fan noise decibel readings, battery tests, some cool tips and tricks, and near the end our overall take on this machine as we list our top three pros and cons that you need to be aware of before forking over all that cash. We're also going to reveal three crazy features of the ASUS software that somehow no one is talking about. This video was not sponsored by ASUS, but I would like to thank the actual sponsors of this video. Viper Antivirus. With over 20 years of industry expertise, Viper is one of the world's largest threat intelligence clouds. Their focus is on prevention using something they call advanced active protection, which stops malware threats before they can be dangerous. Rather than just helping you remove the virus once it's already found you, it updates applications automatically to reduce the opportunity for an unauthorized install. It can scan your email to filter out spam, blocks external access to your camera and microphone, and with its included unlimited VPN, it also prevents any tracking of your device. See below in the description for more information. So starting with the design of this machine, even the box itself led to a pretty epic unboxing experience. The sleek prismatic dot matrix pattern on the cover gets you all excited just hinting on what's about to be revealed. And upon opening the lid, the box lifts up the laptop, popping it out for easy accessibility. Above that, in giant reflective bold font, is the iconic Rogue Republic of Gamers logo and their very important call to action, join the... the, the. And mimicking the pattern on the box is that prismatic sheen on the lid, which looks much more appealing than what you see on camera. It kind of looks like it's raining rainbows. The ergo lift from the box is also echoed within the design of the laptop, as opening it also lifts up the back of the laptop, giving it a pretty pleasing typing angle while also allowing for additional airflow underneath. Now, you understandably may be a little concerned about these vents right here that are actually angled up towards the screen, so we're gonna be addressing that later in the video with some laser heat tests. I love these thin bezels on the screen, but I do wish that it had a webcam. The only thing you'll find at the top are the array microphones, which are actually designed for superior sound. As far as durability of the laptop overall, it's got a reinforced magnesium chassis, so you would expect it to be pretty strong. And in person, it definitely feels that way. It has about average screen flex, and screen wobble and keyboard flex is pretty minimal. You can see it's a simplistically stylish keyboard, but with some interesting layout choices. The first thing you'll notice are these long vents right here which Asus labels as speakers, but they definitely did that mainly for airflow because you can feel a lot of heat coming out of it. One thing everybody is complaining about is the lack of a print screen button. Well technically this snipping tool does the exact same thing, but with a lot more options. At the very top you've got dedicated volume buttons, a mute mic button, and a button that opens up the Asus Armory Crate software. We'll talk about that awesome software here in a bit, but first I've got a complaint. Why in the world do we not have a pause and play button, but we have a dedicated dedicated airplane mode button and an aura button. There's only three options with the aura lighting and two of them are kind of annoying. You've got solid on, breathing, and strobing. That's it. So the option to change that on the fly is pretty unnecessary compared to pause and play. I'd like to have a dedicated number pad, but I think that the increased ventilation and the superior sound made up for it in my opinion. The keyboard itself is relatively comfortable. Pretty decent sized keys that are only slightly smaller than my Alienware M17. Typing felt pretty solid 
solid and had a very soothing and light, almost silent sound. It's got N key rollover so it can accurately detect every single key being pressed, even if every key was being pressed simultaneously. It definitely feels durable and I would hope it is considering it's rated at 20 million key presses. One thing I need to mention is that when I game using the WASD keys, my thumb tends to favor the left side of the spacebar. This revealed a not so pleasing crunchy sound that made it feel less than durable. But hitting the spacebar in the center sounded fine though. The geometric hexagon power button looked pretty cool and also doubled as a fingerprint sensor. And in our tests, red fingerprints lightning fast. It is a really nice unlocking option in public places. Also, I absolutely love the size of this giant touchpad. It's 20% bigger than last year and way bigger than even my 17 inch Alienware. It also feels really smooth and the feedback was on point. Asus also says that it's 40% faster than before. The rounded corners and chamfered edges over the whole machine was also a really nice touch. Moving on to the ports. So Asus made a very interesting and bold design choice to make the entire backside exhaust ventilation with zero ports, with the majority of them being on the left side of the computer, which honestly, I'm not a huge fan of. If a clean setup is what you're going for, it's going to be hard to achieve that with a power cable, a bulky cable from the HDMI 2.0 B port, and then right next to that, an ethernet cable, all of this protruding out the left side. That's a little intense. Following those we have three more ports, two of them being USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C ports, which can also be used as display ports or another way to power the laptop. And then at the end, our headphone and microphone jack. On the right side, we've got a Kensington lock port, a third exhaust vent, a micro SD card reader, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Now moving on to the internals. Out of all of the gaming laptops that I've reviewed, this is the most difficult bottom plate to take off. This one last screw right here just would not budge. So because all the other screws came out, we can kind of take a peek at it and see the Wi-Fi card right there. The 84 blade arc flow fans made of liquid crystal polymer. You can see one of our two 16 gigabyte RAM slots right there. The one that's not soldered on. Our 90 watt hour battery there on the back. There's one of our M.2 slots. For the battery, it claims to have a battery that can last up to 13.4 hours web surfing and 14 hours of HD video playback. But in our test, we only got seven hours of web surfing and seven five hours of HD streaming. All of this at 50% brightness in battery saver mode. But our recharge test showed that it really does charge up to 50% in only 30 minutes. That's pretty good. For the sound quality, no words for the sound. It's incredible. On par with a MacBook Pro quality sound, just not quite as loud. The tweeters provided exceptional sounding treble and the dual force canceling subs provided excellent sounding bass. I know a lot of you probably have really nice professional gaming headsets, but it really isn't a nice perk when you're watching something with friends and family. I tested it with my handy little decibel reader playing the best band of all time, Nickelback, and got a reading of 92.2 decibels at maximum volume. So for the overall display quality, the color was fantastic. That makes sense considering it has the widest gamut possible at 100% DCI-P3, as well as being Pantone validated for superior color accuracy. It's also super bright, so much so to the point where I had to actually turn it down a little bit. And that 165 hertz refresh looks incredibly smooth and made gaming just that much more immersive. All this power in such a small machine, but does it get rid of the heat quick enough? Here are the CPU and GPU temperatures for each of these games at the highest preset settings. You can see that it's about average, not too hot, but also not that cold by any means. I'm just impressed that a machine that's this small and this thin can handle heat that well. The actual body of the laptop got kind of hot though. You can see we're getting readings close to 130 degrees Fahrenheit right there next to the screen. That section of underneath the screen felt pretty warm to the touch, but the screen itself actually didn't feel that warm. And then these are the readings that we got on the outside of the lid. The readings for the keyboard show that it's pretty hot, but it actually didn't feel that hot. When it came to the fan noise, I was pretty shocked. Not very loud at all. In silent mode, the fan noise measured at only 41 decibels. The max we got in performance mode was 52.5 decibels. And we got just one more decibel when maxed out in turbo mode. Pretty quiet, especially considering it was still able to keep the temps down. The ASUS software. Okay, this is something that sets it apart from the rest. Their Armory Crate app displays in a very simple yet appealing way. It's got all the most important statistics about my machine that I actually care about. The frequency, usage percentage, power, temperatures for both the CPU and GPU, and on the left side, a visual representation of what each of your thermal performance settings actually change. But the feature that just gets me so excited that I don't understand why nobody is talking about it is the ability to sync it with the Armory 
Crate app on your phone. This allows you to change your thermal performance settings from your phone. Now this completely eliminates the need to exit your game when you just need to adjust your computer for the right settings on the fly. There's also a mobile connect feature that allows you to transfer files, mirror your smartphone to the computer, or even act as an additional display for your laptop. Now the part that everybody loves, performance and gaming benchmarks. For Geekbench 5, we got a single core score of 1274 and a multi-core score of 8317. For Cinebench R23, we got a multi-core score of 10317 and a single core score of 1162. And 3D Mark, we got an overall score of 8835, a graphics score of 8582, and a CPU score of 10611. Here are the frames per second we got for each game, maxing them out at their highest preset settings. So after all our tests, all the games we played performed really well, but there were a few key areas that the games didn't really take advantage of. For one, the CPU ran at around 50% for most games. And no, it wasn't even bottlenecking because temps never even got to that 100 degree range. We also never used more than 13 gigabytes of RAM. So the budget friendly version of this laptop that I recommend with barely any difference in performance would be the Ryzen 7 CPU with a 3070 GPU and only 16 gigabytes of RAM. This will cost you significantly less money, but also still give you that great performance. Pros. So overall, the top three reasons to get this computer, number one is the audio quality. The best audio quality I've heard in a gaming laptop this size. Apparently the reason the subs sounded so great was because they were designed to play back slightly offset from each other to eliminate the noise produced by vibration. My number two pro is performance. Such a thin and light device and yet it gave us some great benchmarks and some pretty impressive FPS in gaming. Definitely a good performance to pound ratio. And number three is the Asus software. I've reviewed a ton of gaming laptops now, and this has been my favorite stock software for controlling main features of the PC. Some computers had a great UI but lacked key features and vice versa. The Armory Core software had the perfect mix of features and design. The cons. So my top three reasons to maybe pass on this computer. Number one is the keyboard layout. You know, they really dropped the ball leaving out the pause and play buttons. Not sure why controlling a keyboard without any color or real animations needs its own button or why airplane mode is important as its own button. Number two is the lack of a webcam. It's kind of weird that they gave us an exceptional sounding microphone and yet no webcam. There is the ability to link your smartphone over the link to my Asus app and use that as a webcam. But as you can see here, the feedback on that wasn't smooth and the audio was about half a second off. One, two, three. So that feature is actually kind of pointless and not really worth it. And number three is that dot matrix design. I don't think it looks bad. It's just not practical over time. It's going to be prone to collect dirt and dust and it's not gonna be easy to clean. Aside from a few dislikes, this is an amazing laptop and performs exceptionally well. It is on the pricey side, but it's also a premium machine. Guys, remember every Friday I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on and keep an eye out for that each week. Before I announce today's winner, if you're gonna be getting this laptop, please remember to use my affiliate links in the description if you enjoyed this review, as I get a small commission for each sale at no cost to you. On a personal note, I just lost my job recently and I can only keep doing YouTube full-time with your help. And the winner for this week is... Patton and Ansar. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.